Hello and good morning. My name is John Dowd and I'm a health educator for the Middlesex County Office of Health Services. Welcome to our virtual walk with the doc taking place on this beautiful day in Great Oak Park in East Brunswick, New Jersey. You can participate in the virtual walk by taking three steps. Watch, walk, and share. First, view the presentation. Second, take a walk at a nearby park. And finally, share the information and experience with others. If you would like to learn more about the Walk with a Doc program, please visit our website by scanning the QR code on the sign. This walk is presented by the Regional Chronic Disease Coalition of Middlesex and Union Counties. And a special thanks to our partners today, East Brunswick Township, the Middlesex County Health and Wellness Council, and Freeman Chiropractic. Dr. Ken Freeman will lead our walk today and discuss natural illness prevention and stress management. Good body every morning. I'm Dr. Ken Friedman. Hello everyone. On this walk with a doc, we're gonna be stopping at different stations and I'm gonna be giving you information that I've learned over my 41 years of helping people ease from pain and also lead a healthier, more productive life and giving you tips and strategies on how you can improve your tolerance to stress and stay healthier. So come on with me, let's take a step to better health and join me for our first virtual walk with a doc. So folks, we've reached our first station and here we're gonna be talking about the three types of stress. We know that life can be very stressful. You know, if you ask people, what are the three types of stress? Some of them might say, you know, it's my significant other and my two kids. And yeah, that might contribute to some emotional stress. And yes, that's one of the forms of stress, especially with COVID-19 now. There are a lot of emotional stresses because we're dealing with a tremendous amount of change. And change is always stressful, even good change. The second form of stress is physical stress. What are some physical stresses? Well, falls, accidents, injuries, automobile accidents, sports-related injuries. All of these things can be physically stressful. And then there's chemical stress. Chemical stress can involve everything from food additives, preservatives, recreational and therapeutic drugs. We are barraged with a number of chemicals on a daily basis. And these types of stresses that we're subjected to always can have an adverse effect on our health if we don't take proper precautions. Now that we know the three key forms of stress, let's go to station number two. Walk with me and we'll discuss what determines how well you resist illness and handle those stresses that you're under on a daily basis. Well, there are five areas that I think we should discuss. Number one, what do you eat? Never miss breakfast. You always wanna have a good breakfast and make sure that you're eating foods that really nourish. Eliminate sugar, wheat, and then also watch your consumption of dairy. Number two, how well you move. Your body needs to move. So you wanna make sure that all your joints can move freely and well. And we'll talk about that a little more later on. Number three, the quality of your rest. Look at how you're sleeping, the temperature of your room, the quality of your mattress, the type of pillow that you sleep on. All of these factors will contribute to the quality of your rest. Number four, how well you think. Your thoughts determine your reality. The mind and body are connected. So how you think has a direct impact on how well your body handles stress. You tend to get what you focus on. Number five, is your body functioning without interference? We are energetic beings. So we wanna make sure that there's no interference to the flow of life energy between the brain and body. The spine, the vertebrae in the spine, have the tendency of going out of alignment, irritating nerves, and when nerves become irritated, it interferes with how muscles and joints work, so it would interfere with your ability to move or be able to move in a balanced and better way and a stronger way, it would also interfere with your organs and glandular ability to be able to function at their best. Follow me and we're gonna now discuss the natural steps to illness prevention and stress management. What are some things that you could do that are gonna definitely improve your ability to resist illness and also be able to manage stress a lot better? Number one, we talked about eating better and losing weight. Did you know that every extra pound that your body carries adds an extra mile of blood vessels that your heart has to pump blood through. It adds an extra four pounds of stress on your lower back. So if you're carrying a lot of excess weight and you're not experiencing anything yet, 
wait. It's just a matter of time. When possible, make lifestyle changes to eliminate unnecessary medications. Now, for this, you need to sit down with your medical provider and have a frank discussion with them and explain to them what is it that they recommend that you could do within your lifestyle to be able to eliminate some of the medications that you may not necessarily need to take. Get out and use the local and county parks for exercise and meditation. And you can go online to find parks where you could go to exercise and meditate. Have regular dental and chiropractic checkups. See your dentist because many dental problems can impact negatively on other parts of the body. It's all connected. A chiropractic checkup is extremely important because when the vertebrae in the spine go out of alignment and the nerves get pinched, your body doesn't function as well. Sleep on a good mattress. Lie on the mattress so that your hips and shoulders depress into the mattress when you're lying on your side and the rest of your spine is straight. If the mattress is too firm, your, your spine will hang like a suspension bridge, okay? If it's, if it's too soft, then it will bow up in the other direction. And you wanna sleep with a pillow so that the pillow takes up the space between your shoulder and head so your head and neck are kept in line with the rest of your spine. Choose thoughts that serve you better. And for those of you that are having difficulty with it, seek out the advice of a professional psychologist or psychiatrist so that you can get the help that you need. Let's walk to our final station and discuss the ultimate payoff. What do you get from doing these things that we've discussed this morning? Well, first of all, you get better health. That's number one. You'll have fewer medical interventions and the associated bills. The number one cause of bankruptcy in the United States today is medical care. So the healthier you are, the less medical care you'll require. You'll have stronger immunity to illness, disease, and premature aging. With COVID-19 now and whatever may come about in the future, we want to make sure we have the strongest resistance possible. If you eat right, exercise, think good thoughts, get your rest, and make sure that your body's properly aligned without interference, you're going to have the best chance of being able to resist illness and disease. You'll have greater longevity and resistance to death, and if you're going to live a longer life, you're going to have a better quality of life. You'll be adding years to life and life to years. So folks, I want to thank you for joining me on this first virtual walk with the doc. Take care, everyone. Enjoy walking out in the parks and be well.